I am Scott Noel, and uh, this is the opening of my 11th exhibition at the Gross McLeaf Gallery. Under new management? Under new management, but an enduring spirit. I've made a number of short films about artist Scott Noel over the years and his dogged pursuit of perceptual painting. It was great to talk to him at the opening of his new show at Gross McLeaf Gallery. He told me that just before the pandemic, he and his wife had made a pilgrimage to the Prado. Velazquez is the key guy. Seeing a reproduction of Juan de Perea in Life magazine in 1970, when I was 15 years old, gave me a sense of something I really, really might want to do with my life. That image still haunts me. Painting leads you along into this labyrinth and the mysteries keep unfolding as you paint. Still life versus figure painting. Do you prefer one? For me, still life painting and figure painting and cityscape painting are all deeply interconnected. At least in my case, everything becomes flesh in painting. Painting is a direct metaphor for the experience of flesh. And if painting is a kind of skin, a kind of tissue, then everything that's embedded in that tissue, whether it's still life or figure or landscape, becomes a kind of flesh. The laboratory for that for me, though, has always been my devotion to the figure. And as you've often pointed out in earlier videos, there's an erotic dimension to that. Scott, despite the accuracy of your drawing, by which I mean that your proportions and anatomy are always spot on, the way you render forms is sometimes close to pure abstraction. I love some of the classic abstract painters like Arshil Gorky, de Kooning, as a hard-headed realist freshman in college, being attracted to Philip Guston's paintings. But for myself, everything really does proceed from the excitement of what I'm seeing. I'm a very self-conscious, cerebral person in many ways. Almost the only thing I do that completely takes me out of my own head is the act of painting before something. The sense of being in service to something that moves me visually, that I see. And that's always finite. That's always like a door opening onto something magical that I just have to get. The abstract qualities in the painting, I'm glad that you see those. I don't think I'm consciously trying to paint abstractly, but I'm really aware from the long traditions in painting praxis that painting is painting. The surfaces of a Velasquez or a Titian can look at a certain range, just as non-objective as Augustine Painting's movements and gestures, its tendency toward self-referentiality, have always been there. And then painting's deference to the world has always been there. And they're always in some kind of dynamic dialogue for most painters that I admire. And I hope to be part of that tribe <laughs> for as long as I can. As an art teacher, are you finding that students are still interested in painting from life or even painting at all? When I go to the annual student shows, it seems like installation and video and other things are taking over. In my now 26 years at the Academy, I've gotten to work with a lot of extraordinary young painters and they're still coming up. I think painting is embattled because there's a sense that painting doesn't directly enough 
address some of the problems that seem pressing on a political, social, economic, or global scale. It seems local or parochial or historical. But I keep meeting kids that want the work and they want the vocation. The problem is painting takes a lot of time. Painting is a labyrinth that if you enter it seriously, will claim you and eat you for the rest of your life. And you will live in doubt for a very long period, long after it's comfortable among your peers. I can still remember watching my friends from college enter their lives as lawyers and doctors while I was working as a house painter and still had no idea whether I had the stamina to continue as a painter. So it's a wildly impractical thing to do, and yet it is a sainted thing to do. I don't mean for myself, I mean painting is deeply akin to spiritual devotion. When you enter painting, you are committing to an act of faith. Because you find this activity irresistible and meaningful. That's a tough sell in today's world. It just is. But I keep finding kids that want to do it. Your many references to Greco-Roman myths and even sometimes biblical stories, do you see yourself as a defender of Western civilization? I don't know that I think of myself as a defender of anything. The things that move me in history and philosophy and the fund of human stories that have developed across all cultures, I don't think they need defending. They are just a fact. With all the problems in the world, do you feel a pull towards politicization in your artwork? Blue Studio was painted the day before and during the January 6th Capitol Hill riot. This show engages those questions in the only way I can, which is on a kind of meta level. Direct addresses to any of the madness are all oversimplifications, but poetry is a permission to look at the ambiguity and complexity of things. And pretty much every impasse we're at entail complexities that if they're really gonna be dealt with, they have to be dealt with in their fullness. That's where painting and poetry live. Your new gallerist, Rebecca Siegel, had you as a teacher, and she told me that you once said that painting is the great equalizer, no matter where you come from in life. I meant that as an encouragement to the students, but I believe it. Anywhere you look, all the way to this very moment with great poets like Carrie James Marshall and Nicole Eisenman, there's nothing in one's background that absolutely predicts that you will or will not have what it takes to be a poet or an artist. What matters is some deep sense of calling and an implacable drive. There's a line that says in art, if you can be stopped, you will be stopped. And everybody that keeps doing it can't be stopped. They have to do it. Like the blues singers say, you got to pay your dues if you want to sing the blues. You don't get to just be an artist. You only become an artist by the density of the work that underlies your own sense of vocation. I'm honored to count myself as one of Scott's friends. His artworks are beautiful and his paint handling borders on the miraculous. But his value to the art community transcends 
his own work. I will let one of Scott's closest comrades in Turpentine have the last word. In his catalog essay, artist Frank Galuska writes, Scott Knowles' love of painting is such that it overflows into the social domain. Curating, writing, corresponding, teaching, mentoring, championing others. These are the social responsibilities and joys of the artist.